Hi, it's Miss Vital. This podcast is meant for AP Biology is on and is on phylogenetics, which corresponds with Chapter 26 in the textbook. Phylogeny is a description of the evolutionary history of relationships among organisms and their parts. A phylogenetic tree is a diagram that portrays a reconstruction of that history. It is used to depict the evolutionary history of a species, populations, and genes. Any group of species that we designate or name is called a taxon. Taxa is plural for taxon. Taxa include humans, primates, mammals, and vertebrates. Any taxon that includes all of the evolutionary descendants of a common ancestor is called a clad. A trait that differs from its ancestral form is called a derived trait. Conversely, a trait that was present in the ancestor of a group is known as an ancestral trait for that group. Here we can take a look at a phylogenetic tree and look at the different parts. The branch point is where the lineages divide. Sister taxa are where an immediate, um, they are two that share an immediate common ancestor. The basal taxon is the lineage that diverges the earliest. An ancestral lineage, lineage is the original common ancestor. Number two is the branch point that represents the most recent common ancestor for all of the taxa A through F. Number three is the branch point that forms A uh, blotomy, an unresolved pattern of divergence. In order for it to be truly accurate, number three would only be branched into two branches. Not all similar traits are evidence of relatedness, however. Convergent evolution is when independently evolved traits subject to similar selection pressures become superficially similar. For example, the wings that develop in the dinosaur pterodactyl, the bat, and falcon come from different ancestors. Also, a character may revert from a derived state back to an ancestral state. This is called evolutionary reversal. For example, frog ancestors had teeth in the lower jaw. Today's frogs lack those teeth, but one genus of frog has regained those teeth. Convergent evolution and evolutionary reversal cause traits that are similar for reasons other than common ancestry. Such traits are homoplasies. To illustrate how a phylogenetic tree is constructed, take eight vertebrates, the lamprey, perch, pigeon, chimpanzee, salamander, lizard, mouse, and crocodile. There is no convergent evolution or evolutionary reversal here. We'll look at traits that are present, plus, or absent, minus. Lampreys are jawless fish that separated from the lineage leading to the other vertebrates before the jaws arose. So the lamprey is an out-group. Therefore, it is outside the group of interest. So an in-group is the group of primary interest. The out-group determines which traits of the in-group are derived, which means they evolved in the in-group, or which are ancestral, meaning they evolved before the in-group. The root of the tree is determined by the relationship of the in-group to the out-group. The chimp and the mouse share two derived traits, hair and mammary glands. Therefore, they're absent in the out-group and the other species in the in-group. And mammary glands and fur evolved in a common ancestor of chimps and mice after that lineage separated from the ones leading to the other vertebrates. Keratin scales are common to crocodiles, pigeons, and lizards so we can infer that they inherited those traits from a common ancestor. The pigeon has feathers, the others don't, so we assume feathers only evolved once in the ancestor of birds. A synapomorphy is a derived trait that are shared among a group of organisms and are viewed as evidence of evolution. For example, mammary glands and fur in chimps and mice and feathers in birds. By combining this information, we can construct a phylogenetic tree. This diagram shows the tree for the eight vertebrates and is based on the traits we used and that we assume each derived trait evolved only once. 
Typically, biologists construct a trait using thousands of traits. To determine which traits are synopomorphies, meaning from a common ancestor, or homoplasies, meaning not from a common ancestor, we can use the parsimony principle. That states that the preferred explanation of the observed data is the simplest explanation. Therefore, it is the best hypothesis that uses the fewest homoplasies. Modern systematics classifies organisms based on evolutionary relationships. It has been revolutionized using DNA evidence. Phylogenetics also uses morphology, which is the presence um, of size, shape, and other attributes of body parts. Because organisms have been studied for centuries, we have a wealth of morphological data. By using electron microscopes and CAT scans, we can now examine structures at a much smaller scale. In addition to morphology, phylogenetics also includes the use of development, which looks at similarities in early development stages, and we've already seen the study of embryology. As discussed before, the fossil record is another important source of evolutionary history. Also, some behaviors are inherited, for example, frog calls, and can be used in phylogenetics. Explicit mathematical, mathematical models have been developed to describe how DNA sequences change over time. Such mathematical mo models can be used to compute maximum likelihood solutions for phylogenetic estimation. In other words, it can be used to construct the most likely tree. In addition to knowing the order in which evolutionary lineages split, the timing of those splits is also important. Molecular clocks are created using in independent data, such as the fossil record, known times of divergence, or biogeographical dates, for example, the separation of continents. Phylogenies help us reconstruct the past, compare and contrast living organisms, and predict the future. So how does phylogeny relate to classification? In the mid-1700s, Swedish biologist Carolus Linnaeus developed a classification system using binomial nomenclature, which is a two-name system in Latin. Since Latin was learned by all educated people at the time, scientists throughout the world could refer to the same organism by the same name. The two-name system begins with the genus, that is a group of closely related species. The second name is therefore the species. For example, Homo sapien is the genus Homo and the species sapien. The binomial nomenclature, the two-word name, is always in italics and the genus starts with a capital letter, this species does not. All species are currently classified first in a domain, followed by a kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Each level in the hierarchy is a taxon, and taxonomy is the science of naming and classifying organisms. Linnaeus developed his system before evolutionary thought had become widespread in biology, but he still recognized the overwhelming hierarchy of life. Taxonomists today use biological classifications to express the evolutionary relationships of organisms. Therefore, taxa and biological classifications are expected to be monophyletic, meaning that the taxon contains an ancestor and all descendants of that ancestor and no other organisms. In other words, it is a historical group of related species or a complete branch of the tree of life, also known as a clad. Although biologists seek to name monophyletic taxa, the detailed phylogenetic information needed to do so is not always available. A group that does not include its common ancestors is called a polyphyletic group. A group that does not include all the descendants of a common ancestor is called a paraphyletic group.